the Seoul City Tour Bus has created a new route for those who want to experience the true taste and culture of Korea. Running since 2000, Seoul City Tour Bus launched its new traditional market route. This open-top, red double-decker bus takes you to every corner of Seoul so you can experience the city even closer. The traditional market route stops at nine of Seoul's most famous traditional market tourist attractions. The areas of Dongdaemun and Junggu are logistic hubs for merchandise and visitors as Cheongyangli Station and Majangdong Bus Terminal are in these areas. This is one of the stops of the traditional market route. You can easily tell where you are by the enticing aromatic aroma of medicinal herbs. This is Seoul Yangnyang Market. This market shares a long history with Korean traditional medicine. It was built by King Sejong during the Joseon Dynasty, and in here stood the Pojewon, a place where the poor received aid and treatment for illnesses. Merchants started to bring their medicinal herbs to this area since the 1960s, which later became the medicinal herb market as it is known today. Different medicinal herbs produced across the country are first gathered here to be later distributed throughout the country. This market is responsible for more than 70% of nationwide distribution and is 25 to 30% cheaper than retail prices. From visiting the doctor to buying prescribed herbs to preparing concoctions, all of this can be done at this market. If you get off at this stop during your city tour, you can experience the life of the traditional market and the changes it's gone through. This is Jungang Market, located in Shindangdong. Opened under the name of Songdong Market in 1945, Jungang Market used to be one of the three largest traditional markets, along with Dongdaemun and Namdaemun Markets. Food and ingredients played a key role in helping this market become active again. 70 to 80 percent of different pre-cooked foods sold in snack carts such as chicken feet, deep-fried noodles and seaweed, tteokbokki, kimbap, and kopchang are made here. Chungang Market is crowded by retailers and visitors who come to buy ingredients or groceries. It's a place where you can feel the kind, warm hospitality of the Korean people amidst the sizzling sounds of delectable delights. After enjoying the charming life of the market, you must visit this place. It's Jungang Market's new hotspot, called Shindang Creative Arcade. This place used to be the underground shopping arcade of Jungang Market, built in 1968. This L-shaped space has been the home for new artists since 2009. 35 artists use this place as their studio to create culture and art. These artists are also participating in campaigns to reinvigorate the market and offer programs where visitors can also join in. The 50-year-old Jungang Market is regaining life thanks to the works of art created by young artists. Shindang Creative Arcade is an open space that can be enjoyed by artists, merchants, and visitors alike. Seoul City Tour Bus takes you on a special course to the diverse traditional markets, so hop on for a unique experience. The T-Money service was first introduced in 2004 as part of an overhaul of the public transportation system here in Seoul and its surrounding areas. It's been in use since then, with additional services expanding to cover various commercial payments. Now T-Money can be used to make payments at traditional markets as well. Before heading to the traditional market, we charged our T-Money card with the amount needed in preparation. Let's go to Kiltong Traditional Market. Pokjori Market is known to be the representative traditional market of Kangdonggu District. All right, guys, so we've arrived at Giltong Pokjori Market and we're going to go take a look inside. Let's go. Unlike other traditional markets with new arcades installed, this market has kept things original since its opening in the 1970s. 
The tightly packed stalls along the alleyway were selling fruit, seafood, and meat at prices at least 30% lower than those of supermarkets. So it was busy with customers even during a weekday. We tried some duck and ended up buying some because it was so delicious. It's really good. Oh, wow. You go on, huh? Yes, yes. Do you have It's very convenient, guys. This team money card, I just go anywhere. I don't even have to carry cash and I feel safe. So I recommend coming here and trying it out. It's very, very fun and very interesting. We were a bit hungry after our stroll around the market and decided to make a stop at a Sundekuk restaurant that all the merchants recommended. <laughs> Kilbok's Street Cafe is a coffee cart that's become a famous attraction here at the Pokchori Market. It was created by the Merchants Group as a means for everyone to communicate over a cup of coffee. Oh, there's the coffee cart. Let's go take a look, guys. Coffee on Chanji's here. So, of course, we took a free coffee break too. Very delicious. We hopped on a bus to get to our next destination. Needless to say, we paid for the bus using our T-Money card. With just a single card, one can use any form of public transportation in Seoul. And our next stop, Mangwon Market in Mapugu District. If I buy 10,000 won worth of product within an hour of using the public transportation system, I get a 1,000 won discount. Mangwon Market was the first in the city to start the T-Money transaction system. The T sign on top indicates that the store accepts T-Money payments. You have to bundle up in winter. It hasn't yet been an hour since we last got off the bus, so we got a thousand won discount on the next ride. So, give it a try guys. Very useful, very useful. Designated as a traditional market in 2006, Mangwon Market was given its current look in 2008. It's always full of not only fresh produce and seafood, but delicious snacks like dakboki, fried chicken and croquettes. So the market attracts customers of all ages. It's not just things to eat though. You can get everything you need from clothes, shoes, kitchenware, and other daily necessities here too. And what's a trip to the marketplace without snacks? Just wandering while munching on tasty snacks. It's quite fun. Pizza croquette hana hago. Yate croquette hana jisya. The croquette store had become quite popular amongst bloggers, so it was at the top of our list mm. for our Mangwon market tour. No money, no money, no money. All right, I need to go recharge my card right now. We had cash, but since we started the market tour with T-Money, we decided to end it with T-Money. I almost ran away with, uh, without paying. <laughs> and we wrapped up the day's market tour by wrapping the gifts we bought at the markets and writing cards. Please enjoy, guys. Hope you love them. <laughs> Noreangjin Fish Market is in Tongjak District and has a 100-year-long history. It's noted as one of the spots in Seoul with the most daily foot traffic. Whenever you think about Noreangjin, the Noreangjin Fish Market comes to mind. It's super easy to find because it's just right around the corner from the station and... Ah, 
I can already smell the ocean, so let's hurry up and go inside. About 4,000 people work there, and about 30,000 visit, shop, or eat there in a day. The fish market is open 24 hours and bustling with people at any time of day. At 1 a.m. daily, a fisheries auction takes place, the main driving force behind business at the market. In just one night, they can amass over 900,000 U.S. dollars in the auction alone. It starts with shellfish, fresh seafood, then comes the most competitive bidding at 3 a.m. for live fish. This massive marketplace opened in 1927, next to Seoul Station as Kyungsung Susan. Then it was moved to Nojangjin in 1971. The 2012 urban modernization project led to the demolition of the 43-year-old freezer storages. And in August this year, the market will be renovated. A new structure befitting its title as the largest wholesale distribution center in Korea. It's a seafood paradise with crabs as big as your face, shrimp as big as your forearm. Fresh seafood is a must here. So it makes sense this huge market has its own ice making department that delivers it to its vendors. So obviously the fish is fresh, but they have to keep it chilled, otherwise bacteria, et cetera, get into it. This is ice. They have this ice system down to a science. Ice to keep the seafood fresh in the summer and very specific amounts that won't let live seafood freeze in the winter. And what's another must-have here? Knives to cut and prep fresh raw seafood for their customers. Why are people waiting there? A master metalsmith skillfully sharpens knives here. The forge is small but famous because the smiths have perfected their craft for over four generations. So people come here and their knives are like butter knives. They're really dull. They come here, get them sharpened, they take them out. They can also buy new knives. Really nice place. Now it's time to get a taste of the fish. Let's see if I can't catch one. Yeah. This kwanga, or halibut, is a fish that's very popular among customers here all year long. Let's take this upstairs to the second floor and go eat. Nodangjin Fish Market has restaurants, but they're different from the usual raw seafood or hui places around town. The system here is that you buy your seafood at the marketplace, then the restaurants will prepare it for you, usually as hui or in a stew, and offer the most basic sides. For hui, it's about $5, stew, 15 at the most. Mm -hmm. so good. Can you imagine prices like this for fresh seafood anywhere? This place was voted the best place to visit in Seoul by international visitors in 2011, and it's even more popular with tourists now. I'm from the Pacific Northwest, and I have yet to see things that I've seen here today. I mean, it's amazing. We noticed a small cart stall in the middle of all the busyness. 
and had food and beverage for the vendors. This cart is a popular one because the owner is said to have the best coffee. So spending all day in this fish market can be very weary and tiring on the body. So I bought some coffee for the owners of some of the markets to give them some extra energy for the day. Coffee, do you you okay? How do you you okay? Go sing on the Fighting. So, coffee, do you Oh, come on, come on. What's good, do you A small gesture can go a long way. Everyone was genuinely nice and considerate in this market. It was an amazing and tasty adventure. Noryangjin Fish Market is a landmark you don't want to miss. Noryangjin is the best. Noryangjin is the best now. Noryangjin Susan Shijang Ro, Seo. Seo. Today we're going to visit the 400-year-old cultural attraction in the center of Seoul. This seemingly always busy and crowded place is Tongmyo. Tongmyo stands for Tongguan Wangmyo, and it's a shrine built to honor the famous Chinese military commander, Guan Yu, who was famously celebrated in the historical novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms. In 1600, the spirit of Guan Yu is said to have appeared and helped the Koreans defeat the Japanese during the Imjin War in 1952. This is Tongmyo Flea Market. Here you can experience fun and unique activities like searching through piles of clothes. It's exhilarating, like searching for treasure. The economical market offers winter clothes at a very cheap price for the cold winter. Obviously, with these cheap prices, they attract many, from penniless students to Tongmyo's middle-aged regulars. They are very popular indeed. <laughs> On average weekdays, about 300. On weekends, you'll find about 600 display stands lining the streets, selling all sorts of things like clothes, antiques, home appliances, and more. As a flea market, you can find pretty much everything. Walking to the subway, I can see the market from the street. That's how I knew. Uh -huh. yeah, so we come here to do some shopping today. Deeper into the alleyway, you'll find old nostalgic stores that are a testament to Tongmyo's long history. This barber shop boasts a 30-year tradition in Tongmyo. Since it's near the flea market, it is easily accessible, so many customers regularly seek this barber shop out, even today. This is Tongmyo's cultural hotspot, the used record store. Within this 33 square meter store, there are about 20,000 vinyl records on display. From Korean oldies to pop, jazz, classical music, and more, it's like an LP record museum that has everything. After careful selection, you can listen to the record on the spot. Many come here to purchase, but it's also a great listening room for beginning vinyl collectors. Good. 
After enjoying some time shopping, you'll find yourself in the presence of restaurants who have menus with the lowest unparalleled prices found nowhere else in Seoul. This store is already crowded with people ready to eat. Since its opening in 1990, this restaurant has increased prices only 95 cents for its menu items. As a self-serve restaurant, this Chinese restaurant chose to save labor costs so that people can enjoy their meals at a lower price. It's a telling sign of Tongmyo's warm generosity and good-heartedness towards their visitors. Tongmyo has history and cheap ways to enjoy shopping and good food. How about making a visit to this exciting place?